Hello my friends and welcome back to the how to series. In this series we cover every single job FF14 has to offer, fully leveling them up to max level, taking them through high end content and creating an understanding of how to play this job at an optimal level. We're finally on the last healer which is Scholar, part of the barrier healing family which specializes in shielding and mitigation with some regions and obviously PR healing on the side. How we do the how-to series is we break down every single ability that the job has to offer, making an understanding of how to fully utilize these abilities and really untap their potential. We'll then go into an opener rotation part of the video, just showing you the openers really and giving you a brief overview of how to execute them. And then we'll go over gearing on a scholar. So just really breaking down the stat priority and what stats you should be aiming for. And then I'll finish the video off with some closing thoughts about how I feel about Scholar. So without further delay, let us just dive right in. Okay, so how we're going to do this is first we're going to go over the healing abilities. After that, we're going to go over the offensive abilities, then utility abilities, and we'll finish off with fairy abilities because I believe fairy abilities and how to use them requires its own section. So first up, we have Physic. This is our single target heal, and honestly, avoid using this as much as possible unless you absolutely need to use it. Your fairy is going to be covering most of the healing, and this is just incredibly weak, and you're better off doing DPS. I mean, obviously, right? But it's just super weak, and there are better ways to heal than having to use Physic. Maybe you'll use it a little bit in the early leveling experience as a scholar, but for the most part, avoid it as much as possible. We then have Adloquium. Adloquium is our single target shield, and what this does is it's going to initially heal the target, but it's also going to grant a shield to the target. The first shield is called Galvanize and this is a really strong shield, about 180% potency of the HP restored and if you crit this it adds an additional effect called Catalyze which offers an additional 180% of the initial heal into a shield. So if you crit you more or less get double the effect of the Adloquium. How we're going to be using this? Typically when it comes to dungeons use it pre-pull before the tank pulls a big pack and in a raid instance use this before the pull as well. Try and fish for a crit and then for the most part only use it when it's absolutely necessary to use it in the tank or anyone else needs a shield then you can give them an adloquium but for the most part we want to be using dps spells but this is highly effective and highly strong so if you need to use it make sure you're fully utilizing this sometimes if you've run out of resources and you have a lot of mp but you've run out of all your ogcd heals and your a flow stacks then what i typically tend to do is just spam adloquium it's the best thing we can actually just spam because it's going to give a shield, it's going to give a heal. And, you know, if the tanks doesn't have any cooldowns left, then it is our last resort. So just keep that in mind. It is a last resort button to spam if you need to. Next, we have Succor. A bit like Adloquium, this is going to give a shield to everyone healed, but this is an AoE shield instead. It is quite a bit weaker than Adloquium and obviously for good reason because it's an AoE instead. So rather than 180% of the potency, it is 160% of the potency with of course a lower base potency than Adloquium as well. Typically we'll use this to shield for a raid wide but honestly not very often because we usually have more resources at our disposal to do that. So you'll only do this if absolutely necessary but this will make sense once we get a bit further into the video. Alternatively, you can also use this during downtime. So if you don't want to use resources during a downtime part, then you can use a sucker instead. And then that's going to shield your party for whatever is to come during that downtime. That's all of the GCD heals. Let's actually quickly move on to the offensive abilities just to tie this well together. It all makes sense, don't worry. So it's quite simple, really. We have Ruin slash Broil. This is our single target damaging spell use this in a single target instance. We also have Ruin 2. This is our mobility skill. And this is only really a last resort if we need to travel a long distance or we don't have swift cast because if we have swift cast we will use that to move instead that will be gone over later on into the video though but basically just get used to doing stuff like slide casting rather than opting in to use ruin 2 but if you need to use ruin 2 it is there for you. We then have bio and biolis. Same thing this is our dot our damage over time and we use this again in a single target instance but we actually use this even in an aoe instance if there are three or less targets we will be using our bio on all those targets unless they're about to die and then we're going to spam our aoe our aoe is art of war and we want to use this on two or more targets at all times of course keeping a note that you want to put your dot up on enemies before you start spamming your AoE. But remember, only three or less targets when we're putting our dot on. If there's four or more targets, then ignore the dot and just spam AoE. That's the DPS spells anyway. Let's move on to our gauge. 
our healing abilities and the fairy abilities. We're going to tie these all in together and it's all going to make sense, so don't worry. So first, we have Aether Flow. Aether Flow is an OGCD and it's going to grant us three stacks of Aether Flow. Each stack of Aether Flow can be used on special healing abilities and all these abilities will cost one Aether Flow stack per use. I'll go over the Aether Flow abilities. Let me quickly tell you about Aether Pact as well. You don't get this until a bit later on, so some of this you won't apply until you get to this level. You'll get this at level 70. And what it does is it's going to tether your fairy to the target you choose. And this tether is going to basically create a regen on the target you select. It does more than your fairies in braces, so more than your fairies normal heals. This is really good for focus healing, so if you have a tank that you want to keep healed up and topped up, then you can use Aether Pact on that target and it's going to keep them healed up. How are we going to use Aether Pact though? It's on a 3 second cooldown, obviously it's not free right? It isn't. Basically we have another gauge alongside the Aether Flow gauge, which is the Fairy gauge. Each time we use one of our Aether Flow abilities, it's going to increase that Fairy Gauge by 10. For each 10 gauge of the Fairy Gauge, we have one tick of the Aether Pact ability, which is Fey Union, which is the tether you'll be seeing. So for every heal of a tick, it's going to take 10 away from your Fairy Gauge. I'll talk more about the effective use of the Fairy Gauge later on into the video, but just know this for now. Let's move on to the actual Aether Flow abilities themselves and give you further explanation. First we get Lustrate which is a single target OGCD heal and there's not really much to go over really when it comes to this. Use this on the tank when they're low and they need a bit of a top up or use this on someone else who took some damage they weren't meant to take that damage. Use a Lustrate and get them back up to health. We then have Sacred Soil. Sacred Soil is on a 30 second cooldown so keep this in mind you cannot spam it. It's going to create a bubble in a designated location and anyone who enters this bubble is going to take 10% less damage. Once we get to level 78, this is going to have an added regen effect. This added regen effect amounts to the same amount of cure potency as a single lustrate, but on everyone who enters the bubble. So highly effective, a lot better than a lustrate once we get to level 78. So once we get to level 78, I typically use this in a dungeon pool. So the tank and everyone else, in fact, can stand in it, take 10% less damage, and that tank's also going to have a regen effect. So that's just brilliant. And it's just A for flow efficient so that's one of the uses for it you can also use it on raid wides as well very good use for that and a thing to note as well is it will have a lingering effect for about one server tick one server tick is about three seconds give or take and basically when this expires it's going to last an additional three seconds if you're lucky if you're unlucky maybe one to two seconds depending on server tick but server ticks are beyond the scope of this video just keep in mind that they are one to three seconds long we then have indomitability this is basically lustrate but for the whole party instead it is again on a 30 second cooldown so you cannot spam it and it obviously isn't as strong as lustrate when used on a single target it's only 400 potency as opposed to lustrate which is 600 potency but this is great to heal the party up when they just took raid wide damage of course right it's going to give everyone a heal so it just makes sense to use it during these points we now have excognition excog is actually really great it's better than lustrate but it is on a 45 second cooldown so do keep that in mind it's going to grant a buff to someone called excognition and what this buff is going to do is when they drop below 50 percent hp or the effect expires then they're going to get a big heal for 800 cure potency it will last 45 seconds and this is very Aether Flow efficient so make sure we're using this. I typically tend to use this on the tank when they're doing a dungeon pull but also if someone takes damage which they shouldn't have took or maybe they just got revived and they are below 50% health and I know this is going to proc on them in the instant I put it up then I'll put it on those people as well and it's going to instantly heal them a lot more effectively than a Lustrate and I'll probably have to not stress over getting them to max health as much as if I was to use a Lustrate instead for example. We then have Energy Drain. This is a DPS OGCD using an Aether Flow stack just like the rest of them and this is basically just a damaging OGCD spell. We want to use as many of these as possible to increase our overall damage but of course not prioritizing that over the use of our healing abilities if we need the healing abilities if we don't need the healing abilities like lustrate and dom xcog all that stuff then we're going to use energy drains instead to maximize our damage all right let's quickly go over some ogcds before we move on to the fairy so first we have deployment tactics this is on a 90 second cooldown and basically what it
it does is if we cast Adloquium on someone, we can target them with deployment tactics, use it, and it's going to spread that Adloquium or the Galvanize effect to every single party member. So this is great for creating a super strong shield on the entire party for maybe raid wide damage or something like that. I would typically tend not to do it if the boss is targetable unless absolutely needed and it's going to save our co-healer or whatever a GCD healing, then sure, do it. But typically when it comes to it, I would use this during downtime so the boss is untargetable. I'm gonna add low the tank or whoever really, use deployment tactics, give that effect to everyone. Then the boss will come targetable and do their raid damage, whatever, right? And we would have shielded it with deployment tactics. You can also use this in the opener of some fights. So some fights might use a raid wide straight away or very early into the fight. So you can use deployment tactics to get a nice spread shield before that raid damage comes out. So it has multiple uses. Just try not to use it too much during the fight when a boss is targetable and try and do it more when the boss isn't targetable. Then we have emergency tactics. This will allow the next Adloquium or Sucker to double the effect of the healing essentially. What it's going to do instead of having the shield, it will instead take away the shield but add an additional heal on top of the spells that you cast. So you cast Loquium with emergency tactics, it's just going to be a big heal rather than a heal and a shield. Same with Sucker. I don't really use this too often, just like Pepsis on Sage. It does have its uses, say if you need to top up the party during a certain mechanic or something like that, then maybe combine emergency tactics with Sucker if you don't have any other OGCD heals like in Dom. Then use emergency tactics, use Sucker and top your party off. Pretty simple, really. We then have Dissipation. Now, this is kind of tied to Fairy, but let's talk about it anyway. When we use this, it's going to unsummon our Fairy, but it's also going to grant us a full stack of Aether Flow, so all three stacks again. And on top of that, it's also going to increase our healing magic potency by 20%. So there's two ways to look at this ability. It can either be used as a emergency ability in a pinch or a DPS increasing ability because it's going to give us a flow stacks which can then be transferred into energy drains. As for the emergency it's going to make our heals stronger right so really in a pinch when we really need those stacks we can use dissipation, unsummon our fairy, increase the healing of our shields so our suckles, our adlows, all that stuff and yeah it's going to grant us the free stacks of a flow so we can also use that on endom and lustrates and all that good stuff. So only really use this in an emergency or when you want to pump out more damage in an optimal setting. We then have recitation this is on a 90 second cooldown and this is a great ability. What it's going to do is allow the execution of Adloquium, Suckle, Indom or Excog without consuming resources. So what this means is for Adlo and Suckle, it's not going to cost any MP and Indom and Excog, it's not going to cost an Aetherflow stack. And it's also going to always ensure that any of those abilities that we use will be a critical heal. So if we use it with Adlo or Suckle, it's going to be a critical shield. Or if we use it with Indom or Excog, it's going to be a critical heal. Typically, when it comes to dungeons and stuff, I'll use this ability, I'll use an Adlo low and that'll go to the tank and then they're just gonna have a super buffed adloquium when they do a dungeon pull and i won't have to worry too much about healing them during the dungeon pull and i could spam my art of war or whatever more often without worrying about them too much in a raid instance i would typically use this more on xcog and stuff like that because i don't really want to catch myself using adloquiums too often and due to this reason i would much rather have that crit heal on my xcogs and in dom for a really big aoe heal that's going to restore critical HP literally to everyone. So another really good use of this for raid wides and stuff as well. So a few ways to use this ability and very versatile. So just make sure you are taking full advantage of this. We then have Protraction. Now Protraction is basically thrill a battle if you played Warrior, but a bit weaker. It's on a 60 second cooldown. It's going to increase the target's HP by 10% and also increase their healing received by 10% for 10 seconds. This is really good to snapshot regens and the likes also good for ad lows all that good stuff it's a really good ability on a really short cooldown you can also use this on the fairy tether so very important here is when you use aether pact the fairy tether you can use this buff on the tank for instance and if it drops off during the fairy tether then it doesn't matter because it's still going to have the 10 percent healing increased and that's basically going to snapshot from the fairy tether and even if it does fall off like i said it's still going to have that 10 percent so really effective use right there and finally we have expedient this ability is absolutely bonkers we get a level 90 it's on 120 second cooldown and what this does is it's going to give everyone literally a sprint for 20 seconds and it's going to make everyone take 10 percent less damage for 20 seconds as well this is 
really good and has a lot of versatility to it. You can use this in a fight that is going to have a movement instance and you want everyone to have sprint. In the extreme trials, there are two instances for that sprint. And there's also instances in the new Savage Raid where this expedient comes in really handy as well. Very versatile ability. Use it on raid wides. Use it when your group needs an AoE speed increase. It's going to lessen the error of getting hit by an AoE. And that's just great overall. So experiment with this ability. Try it out on all the extreme trials and raids and honestly you're going to find a lot of value with this ability it has so many uses so very enjoyable ability to use make sure we're taking full advantage of it let's finally move on to the fairy this shouldn't take too long let's go over the basics of what a fairy does of course you summon the fairy and it's always going to embrace a target every three seconds and this target has to of course take damage for it to embrace but embrace is just a little heal which the fairy does so it's basically a passive regen on anyone and it'll heal anyone depending on who takes damage there's one very important command in your pet hotbar as well it's called place and you typically want to do this when it comes to a raid instance or a trial you want to place your fairy literally in the middle of the room and this is just going to make sure they can get heals to everyone in the party without having to worry about aoe heals or the fairy tether not reaching anyone so make sure we're doing this very important to do let's go on to some abilities that the fairy has we first have whispering dawn on our fairy and this is just an aoe regen not much to really go over use this on raid wide damage use it on your tank when their tank just wants a regen as well it has multiple uses and it's not really too much to think about we then have fey illumination fey illumination is going to increase the healing magic potency of all nearby party members by 10 percent and it's also going to reduce the damage taken by party members by five percent and this is going to last 20 seconds. Do note that that increased healing magic potency does not apply to OGCD heals or your fairy heals. This only applies to GCD heals if you catch yourself using GCD heals, but for the most part you want to do it for the 5% less magic damage taken, usually on raid wides and stuff like that. Pretty easy to use, just use it when a raid wide is coming out and you're going to mitigate it. Sometimes you might want to save it for raid busters, which are highly damaging raid wides instead. So just keep that in mind. It's a very versatile ability. It has its uses for the most part. The next fairy ability that we get is Fey Blessing. This is on a 60 second cooldown. And basically what this does is it's just an AoE heal for 320 potency. Very nifty, actually. Just make sure you're using this after a raid wide just to heal everyone up. It's also good on the tank individually as well. It's better than an embrace. So this is going to be effective on a tank in a big dungeon pool as well. Next, we have Summon Seraph. This is going to turn our fairy into Seraph. And what Seraph does is it will turn her embraces into Seraphic Veils, which are stronger and they also will give a mini shield to the target they also cast their embraces on. So basically this is going to make our fairy stronger, but do keep in mind that you cannot use Fae Blessing and Aether Pact when you turn your fairy into Seraph. And this is going to last 22 seconds, so keep that in mind. We then have Constellation. Constellation is going to replace Summon Seraph on the hotbar. This has two charges, so every time you use Summon Seraph, you'll always have access to two of these. And what it's going to do is cast an AoE heal and shield on the entire party. The shield is actually pretty strong, and this the cure potency of the shield is actually stronger than her embrace. So if you're exclusively using Seraph on the tank, then you can still use Constellation. It's going to be stronger than just waiting for her to embrace the tank as well. So keep that in mind. For the most part, Seraph is going to be used to heal and shield raid wide damage. But as I have mentioned, you can use Seraph overall to heal and shield through just a tank as well. Just try and get maximum usage of Seraph throughout a fight. One final thing to note about the fairy is the potencies are slightly off. And what I mean by this is they're not exactly the cure potency that they claim to be. The reason for this is because the fairy is not as strong as you, the scholar. So that means these cure potencies, a 300 cure potency on the fairy, isn't going to be the same as a 300 cure potency, which you use instead. It's going to be slightly weaker because she is scaling off you, but ever so slightly weaker as well because she's not getting your full stats. If if that makes sense so she'll get your stats but not all of them she's only going to get a certain percentage due to this fact she will not be as strong as the tooltips list so just keep that in mind it's not really too big of a deal because at the end of the day it heals and you'll learn throughout a fight how much it's healing anyway but it's just something to keep a mental note of one final ability before we move on to the shared abilities is change stratagem this is on a two minute cooldown so it aligns with everyone else's raid buffs and this is going to increase the chance to land critical hits on the target you put this debuff on by 10% and it's going to last 15 seconds so 
make sure we're aligning this with our teammates raid buffs let's quickly go on to the roll actions and resurrect i mean resurrection right here you'll see it uh, basically what it does is it resurrects someone who's dead so use this when someone dies obviously right Repose, this puts the target to sleep. Sleep, pretty useless. Has its uses, but honestly, it doesn't see much use at all. Asuna, this will cleanse a detrimental effect from the target, so make sure we're using this. When we see someone get a debuff, which can be cleansed, you'll see a little white line above. And this is just a clear indicator that the debuff can be cleansed. Swift cast, this allows the next spell to be cast immediately. So this is really good for resurrection when we're in our progression scene. And this is also really good, but if we are comfortable with a fight or whatever, then we can use swift cast on a broil for movement or in our opener, which I'll go over in just a bit. And this is gonna save us having to use a ruin too, and instead your swift cast broil overall more DPS. We then have lucid dreaming, and this is just what we're going to pop when we are running low on MP. Well, not really. We wanna typically pop this around seven to eight K MP, and this is gonna top our mp back up and keep it at a healthy level it's on a 60 second cooldown so when we're in that flow of it of being in a fight then you know make sure we're using this when it comes off and we're around 7 to 8k mp we then have sure cast this allows spells to be cast without interruption and nullifies most knockback and drawing effects so we want to use this when a boss is doing a knockback so we do not get knocked back and we can continue doing damage we then have rescue it's a very niche ability has its uses if you see someone in danger if they're in a mechanic standing in aoe whatever right use rescue on them save them from that aoe save them from dying or getting a vulnerability stack which is going to save you pain having to heal them throughout the course of the fight and that is every single ability Ability scholar has and how to utilize them let's move on to the opener and rotation okay there's two openers for scholar first is the swift cast opener so we're going to demonstrate that in this footage really not too much for me to talk about we're just going to use potion on the pull here start casting broil get our bio up make sure we're using our aether flow continue to broil and we use that swift cast so we can double weave our chain and energy drain just like that and then all we're doing really here is spamming our energy drains our broils in between every gcd as to not clip into our gcd and then we use dissipation to get even more energy drains and all we do is broil spam until we need to bio again then we have the non-swift cast opener and this one's again really simple all we do is use our potion before the pull and broil away obviously again aether flow as soon as we can and we won't be using our energy drains until we've got chain strategy up and all we are doing here really is delaying our energy drain usage and our dissipation usage. Then we use dissipation, energy drain away, continue to broil spam, and just like that, it's pretty simple really. Okay, so it's pretty simple for stats. What we want to prioritize right now is critical hit rate. After that, we want to meld direct hit, and after that, we want to meld determination. Spell speed I don't think is too good on a scholar right now. It might get more value and more use after some patches down the line but right now it's not a valued stat for scholars piety again is a very personal preference stat so have as much as you need to have but honestly i wouldn't opt in to have any piety and avoid it as best as possible but again if you really want the piety and you find yourself running out of mp then it will be good but honestly scholar really doesn't have much issues with running out of mp with aether flow and lucid dreaming at its disposal it really doesn't have too much of an issue there but as long as you follow that stat priority it's going to help you a bunch crit and direct hit are also very equal in terms of our damage output but because critical hit rate also has a good effect on our healing critical adloquiums then that is why we're going to prioritize critical hit rate it's also just more versatile for every single other healer as well by just going for crit so it makes sense to make crit your number one stat direct hit determination probably spell speed after that and then piety and piety is as much as you want for personal preference reason of course that will actually do the video hopefully it hasn't taken too long there's a bit to talk about with scholar with the fairy management and all that stuff so hopefully it's all made sense and i've provided some good insight into the job for you and you can take away some stuff from this video and put it into practice and put it into player when you're playing scholar i actually really enjoy scholar now i used to hate it with the pet being so finicky and the ai being so bad but now now i really like scholar i think scholar's a really really fun healer actually and i really do enjoy myself when i play scholar expedient is an incredibly fun ability to use and play around with so i have a lot of fun with that ability the snapshotting of certain abilities like 
protraction and stuff like that is just amazing. Some of it, it its kit synergizes so well with itself, uh, in my opinion. It just feels like a really nice and smooth healer to play. Of course, Pet AI is still a bit of a pain, but other than that, yeah, I really like Scholar. I think it's a really well-made job, and I'm really enjoying it now, and I'm not actually sure what my favorite healer is anymore. After leveling every single healer to max and doing all the trials and stuff, as these healers, I cannot decide which is my favorite, but Scholar is definitely up there. It's a very fun healer. So I do enjoy it. That will do my closing thoughts. If you liked the video, please do leave it a like. If you would like to add anything to this video, anything you may feel like I've missed or anything like that, then please do leave it in the comments below or just let me know how you're finding Scholar as well. If you like my content overall, then please do give me a subscribe. I'd really appreciate that. It would help me and the channel a bunch. If you would like to further support my channel via non-monetary means, you can follow me on Twitter, where I will be hosting giveaways for certain milestones on my channel. So if you would like a early notification on that, don't worry, I'll still post community posts when it comes to that, but you'll have a nice early notification if you follow me there. So do make sure you do that if you are interested in that. You can also follow me on Twitch where I stream occasionally. I do want to branch out more onto Twitch, but I don't want to make it my priority. YouTube is still my priority, but I will have a schedule for Twitch in the future once I can focus even more on my content creation with Final Fantasy XIV. Also, I have a Discord and you can join that. It's still a work in progress, but it's a pretty comfortable place to be. You can ask questions directly to me from there as well and just interact with fellow people in the community. So it's a pretty chill place. Still work in progress, as I said, but feel free to join. And all of these can be found in the description below. Anyway, That'll do it for the video. Thank you so much for watching. I appreciate your time and I'll see you guys in the next one. Take it easy. Stay safe. We out. Peace.